there's no place else in the world you can go with a higher probability of seeing a whale. We're standing at Limekiln Light here at Limekiln State Park on San Juan Island. And this is the foremost whale watching park in the world. My name is Dr. Val Veers. I'm a retired physics professor from Colorado College in Colorado Springs. And here for the last 10 years, I've been listening to the underwater sounds of the sea. We do that with underwater microphones. We have a group out in front of this uh, scene in front of us of uh, five hydrophones. Here's a hydrophone. Okay. So listening to the underwater sounds of the sea is, a, is an effort to try to understand the acoustic environment of the killer whales that very commonly visit this island. I came out here on a sabbatical from my little college in Colorado, largely because my two slightly grown-up children were in the Seattle area. Somebody at this island who was making recordings over here sent me a, a tape. It was back in the days of cassette tapes, and he played this tape, and he, I said, wow, that's not what I've been hearing on my hydrophone. I've been hearing ferry boats, tickety, tickety, tickety. I've been hearing crabs, scratch, 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 but I haven't heard these marvelous sounds that these animals make. So the vocalizations are quite unique to this group of orcas. There are about 85 animals in three family groups called pods, labeled J, K, and L here. And each of those pods seems to have a signature or contact call that's characteristic of that particular group. We heard which is very commonly given by J pod. And then we heard which is very commonly given by L pod. By listening to these a, a lot, you kind of develop a sense of the vocabulary and, and you cue on that. Most people feel that, that this population is under a very serious threat of lack of food, overdose of pollution, and too much underwater noise and, and boat harassment. If we were listening to the underwater sounds, we might hear the waves lapping on the shore, but that would soon be interrupted by the high-speed whine of a speedboat that would flash over our hydrophones in the course of a minute. It would come, it would get loud, it would go away. And then echoing and rumbling, we would hear a container ship coming in from Asia, coming around the corner of Vancouver Island and up the Arrow Strait. And thinking of living in that world reminds me of what it would be like to live under the takeoff route of an airport next to an, a train tracks carrying coal trains. So underwater, the noise that, uh, that, that humans put in there may play profound roles in marine mammals' ability to use the environment in ways that they're evolutionarily adapted. People have been listening to these sounds for 25 years. And in my mind, the, the only uh, good example of who made what call in a call and response situation is a recording that we made a number of years ago that a mother and her calf swimming as one pair and her young calf swimming separately were talking to each other. And the conversation, when you listen to it and watch the reconstruction uh, on the computer, very much looks like, I'm going over there. I'm going over there. Don't go over there. Don't go over there, a little louder. I'm going over there right now. Then it descends into a kind of a, a, um, a maelstrom of sound. And in, the, in that intense back and forth, the young whale turns away from the boat and then parallels the boat and then over the next number of minutes returns to his mother about 400 meters away. We've had three or four experiments which have, have documented the fact that the whales speak more loudly when the background noises are higher. If, uh, if it's harder for them to hear their echoes, then they won't be able to detect a fish that was used to be 100 meters away. Now maybe it can only be 20 meters away. Our 
goals for this are multiple. One is kind of public education, another is trying to, to uh, move toward a deeper understanding of how the underwater noise may affect the behavior of the orcas. Once we understand that, and we understand that those noises may make it harder for the whales to forage, to navigate, to communicate, then we have a chance to take some societal steps to give them a little better chance.